Hey Slashaholics, this is your friendly neighborhood 80 Slasher Librarian. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at the patron-exclusive early access audiobook narrations of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, the novelization of the movie. Over on the Patreon page right now, you can get access to weekly chapter audiobook uploads of this book for as low as $2 per month, and you'll be supporting the channel. And depending on which tier you select, you'll also get some great rewards while you're doing it. So, with that being said, if, you, if you've thought about becoming a patron before, here's a little sneak peek at one of the early access books you'll get over there exclusively on Patreon. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch by Jack Martin. Enjoy the sneak peek, guys, and I hope to see you over on Patreon. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch by Jack Martin. The Witching Hour. Dr. Chalice set up. There was a sound like nothing he'd ever heard before. A muffled groan, then a shriek, then a high, steady, inhuman wailing that went on and on. It was not of this world. It was a sound made in hell, and it came from Marge's room. Prologue. Chalice was dead. Children's voices drifted into the room, thin and teeny, sinuating from the corridors into the bright light, bouncing off sterile walls and ringing like beaten silver over the bowed head of the man in the white lab coat, which of course did not move. The insistent refrain, chanted inanely to the tune of London Bridge is Falling Down, was for a few moments everywhere, even cutting into speakers which were set to carry only a steady drone of music around the clock throughout the hospital and, it had seemed to chalice lately the entire world. But tonight, he was feeling no pain. At last, the advertising jingle wound down, followed immediately by a few bars of what sounded like Madison Avenue's idea of an Irish jig. Then that too faded, and a syrupy sea of characterless middle-of-the-road orchestral pop music washed over everything once more. It was a thick blue sound like bow bells muffled by fog, and it fell softly on the ears, demanding nothing but passive consumption. On a night like this, even Chalice might have found it soothing. It was the music of merciful oblivion. Chalice was slumped forward, his forehead distorted against the ersatz wood grain of a table in the staff lounge. There was no one else in the room. In the distance, a bell was ringing dully. There was the creak of a stainless steel cart willing through the halls. Somewhere, the squeak of rubber soles on polished floors, followed closely by clipped, efficient voices as brittle and cold as a window glass, and the thumping of doors opening and closing in another part of the building. At this hour, just before the majority of the hospital staff changed shifts after dinner break, no one had found him yet. Chalice could not have planned it better if he had tried. Above and in front of him hung an institutional TV set. Its sound was off. A badly adjusted picture rolling from top to bottom like an out-of-control microfilm scanner. Nothing else moved. Now, however, there was a new sound, an electrical buzzing. It came from the lighting fixtures, as if an insect were trapped within the panels of the ceiling. The buzzing continued for a few seconds. Then suddenly, one of the neon tubes sizzled and flickered out, as though dark wings had settled over that part of the room. Outside the windows there was a blinding flash. Instantly, the other lights shut down. The fluttering TV picture popped and shrank to a tiny point. A single glowing eye receding rapidly away down a tunnel and gone. The lounge was plunged into darkness. Rain scattered against the windows, illuminated from behind by headlights in the night. Drops clung to the panes, suspended there and seemed to turn, each an individual lens reflecting cars that passed on the road, then quickly flowed together and ran down the glass in sheets as the landscape blurred. Another crack of thunder hit. It shook the walls and the cold fluorescent tubes vibrated back to life. 
The squares of the low ceiling brightened in no particular sequence, flicking back on in random order until the overhead checkerboard was complete. In the peculiar strobing, Chalice's arm appeared to twitch on the tabletop. His head seemed to raise uncertainly an inch, two inches. A running in the halls, the door burst open. A nurse stood there, hands on hips. She hesitated before coming in all the way. She was on the downhill side of middle age, resignedly overweight, and wore the perpetual expression of a woman who has seen enough of all the wrong things to last two lifetimes. Doctor, you all right? She paused, glanced back at the commotion in the hallway, and came to a decision. She took two more steps into the lounge. Is that you, Dr. Chalice? Her face relaxed a bit. How did you like the fireworks? Another one of life's little tests. A power blackout, wouldn't you know? As if we didn't have plenty to worry about already. That old emergency generator kicked in, praise the Lord, but I don't know how much longer Mr. Garrett can keep it. Dan, are you all right? She pursed her lips and crossed the room. Poor man, working too hard, same as always. She sighed wearily. Well, it's that way for everybody these days, I reckon. Seems like the last times, doesn't it? You look like you're dead to the world. She reached up and twisted the knob of the TV. The picture steadied, but immediately broke up into a swirling vortex of snow. She slapped the side of the cabinet. The picture pulsed into temporary focus. It was the 7 o'clock report with Robert Mundy, the local Plastoid TV newscaster. She adjusted the volume. And later in tonight's special eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball segment, Trina will show us how to make a bright and breezy repast with the flair by dressing up a card table. And we'll have the latest on that unusual case of vandalism over in merry old England. But first, let's pause for this important message. The nurse rested her spotted hand on the back of Chalice's neck. On TV, a grinning witch's face filled the screen. Gnarled skin glistened, a warty nose inches from the camera as the witch peered down into the room through a storm of salt and pepper static. The effect was grotesque. Those masks said the nurse with distaste. They've gone too far this year. Too realistic, she shuddered. Wish we could hurry up and get Halloween over with. Nasty holiday. Nothing but trouble for children. For all of us. It's unchristian. The picture destabilized again as a new round of lightning split the sky outside. The commercial broke up and began to roll vertically, but the chorus of taunting preteen voices continued to nag from the cracked speaker. Again, a blast of thunder shook the walls. This time, some of the lights went out and stayed out, as the small hospital's emergency system struggled to maintain half power. In the wavering light, Chalice moved. His neck swelled angrily beneath his white collar. Startled, the nurse snatched her hand away. Don't they ever give up, he roared. It's morning to Halloween. Turn that damn thing off, the nurse regained her composure. Yes, of, of course. She reached to lower the sound. I said off now. Will you do that little thing for me, Agnes? Quickly, she touched the knob again, and the image collapsed and faded from the screen. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you very much. It does get on one's nerves, doesn't it? She said sympathetically. Then it's after seven. When, when you didn't sign out, well, I was worried. I know, I know. Chalice rubbed his face, as though to brush away cobwebs. Sorry, Agnes, really. I must have dozed off. Passed out from exhaustion is more like it. She positioned herself behind him, and began kneading his hunched shoulders through the coat. He didn't seem to notice. He shuddered his fingers over his eyes and let out a sour breath. What else is new? Christ! This is getting to be a regular part of my rounds, isn't it? Tell me the truth, Agnes. I can count on you. 
You always tell me the truth, don't you? Well, all I know is that a person can't keep working double shifts for as long as you have and not expect to pay the piper sooner or later. Her voice took on a maternal quality, scolding and solicitous at the same time. Everything, said Chalice matter-of-factly, has its price. I knew that, but it didn't stop me, did it? No, not me. His voice trailed off bitterly. He snorted to clear his throat. With surprising tenderness, the nurse then said, You know, sometimes the price isn't worth paying. Ever think of that? I did, Agnes. Truly, I did. Thought about it night and day for six months. A lot longer than that, if you want to be honest about it. More like since the first year Linda and I were married. How do you like that? Then, after a while, that was all I did. Think. I couldn't even sleep. And are things any better now? To that, Chalice said nothing. From outside on the highway came a bleeding of horns, followed by a siren. A streak of red light swept across the dripping panes. Well, said Agnes finally, massaging her strong thumbs deep into his medulla. I think it's time for you to get on home. Nothing personal now, but I do believe we can manage without you for a few hours. Home? said Chalice bitterly. What home? I know, I know. I made my bed, now I have to lie in it. Isn't that what you were about to say? Well, as I believe our Lord once told Pilate, you said it, I didn't. Hi, this is Jeffrey Reddick, creator of Final Destination. Greetings, Slashaholics. This is David Bergantino, author of the Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror books, the Bard's Blood Horror Shakespeare books, Hey, this is Slasher Pepper. Hey, everybody. It's C.J. Graham, Jason, Friday the 13th, Part 6. This is William Patterson, known to Friday the 13th fans as Eric Morris. Hi, this is Deborah Voorhees from Friday the 13th, Part 5. Hey, folks. This is Adam Marcus, director of Jason Goes to Hell and Secret Santa. <laughs> Hello, kitties. This is John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. Hi, this is Kane Hodder. Better known as Jason from Friday the 13th, Victor Crowley from Hatchet. And you're listening. You're listening. You're listening. That's why I make sure you guys know you're listening. You are listening. And you are listening. And you are lucky enough to be listening. Okay, boils and ghouls. You are listening. You are listening to the 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. The 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To 80s slasher librarian. To 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. To the 80s slasher librarian. The 80s slasher librarian. Keep listening, or I'll kill you.